Hey guys, it's Kuda here, and today we are going to go through my very first complete sketchbook. Now, before I hop into it, I just want to say I have been putting this off for months. Like, this sketchbook was complete way back in February, and I was going to record my tour right away, but then I got really busy with school, and a lot of things kind of went down with my family. So I never really got around to it, unfortunately. But here we are, and I am finally ready for this tour. So without further ado, let's hop into the sketchbook. Alrighty. So first off, you can see the dates of when I started and finished my sketchbook which comes down to a whopping 14 months. I'll admit, I was super, super slow going at the beginning of the sketchbook. As you'll see, there are literally four months between this page and the one after it. I really found my flow for drawing more traditional stuff between June and July of 2019. Now, onto the art. This right here is the first ever watercolor piece I ever did. <laughs> I was strictly a sketching and digital art gal, but after this little whip right here, it kind of got me hooked on markers and throughout the sketchbook you'll see that um, interests grow intensely. <laughs> Alright, so about four months later, as I said, in April, I did this redraw or draw this in your style challenge on Instagram from an artist I follow, Ibu Chan. Um, over here on this side you'll see my character Frankie for an upcoming in progress webtoon I'm doing. <laughs> okay this actually has a super cute story behind it. So my brother and I were sitting around at my grandma's house and he asked me if he could draw in my sketchbook. And this is kind of what he came up with, I guess. <laughs> he drew a tree and a Mopar symbol. And if you look, he even like, he signed his name in the corner and everything. I was super excited. He's been getting more and more into art, like not so much recently, but a tiny bit, while, like a tiny while back. And I'm really excited to see what comes of it. And if his passion for art grows, just like mine and my sister's did. On this side, is just another character from that same webtoon. His name is Mason. <laughs> so these are even more characters from that webtoon. Um, this is Lorraine, Levin, and Lance. This is Charlie. Now Lance here, um, he goes through about three redesigns throughout this sketchbook. <laughs> And you'll, I mean, you'll see them soon, but I just wanted to let you know. This isn't uh, Lance's final design. He does end up changing a lot. Here are just some basic thumbnails of some things I was working on way back when. I did Daenerys and her dragon. Uh, this is my Pride Month special from, I think, I think this is last year's Pride Month special, literally. <laughs> And then I did the Spider Sona challenge later on, you'll see. And here is a thumbnail for this picture, which is once again, Frankie, Charlie, and Mason. And this is where the obsession starts. <laughs> so I bought this 60 set of Oohu watercolor brush markers. And if you remember, I did a video where basically I reviewed them from a newbie's perspective which I'll link in the description below. But here's kind of what I came up with for that. I was trying to like, I knew they were watercolors, so I was trying to push them to their limits so much. I tested blending, I tested how it was with microns, and I was really happy with this, so yeah. These are just some doodles, like from summer <laughs> that I kind of, enjoyed and then here I was just practicing drawing some roses and it kind of made me think of Tamaki 
But then I was like, you know what else does make me think of? Beauty and the Beast. And I really, really like this sketch. I just drew, like, a girl reading Beauty and the Beast. Like, that's the book she's reading. So it's very subtle, like the detail, but I really liked it, so. And oh, what a surprise! More watercolor markers, this time from Arteza. Um, and this is just my swatch page for them, so I never did a review or anything. So I believe that I decided to do the Spider Sona challenge while I was scrolling Pinterest. I just saw tons and tons of Spider Sona designs and it really made me want to dive into the challenge. So I whipped up these sketches, these sketches to flesh out her design and then I did a digitalized illustration based on this sketch right here. Here are just some more basic sketches. Um, this is that first redesign I was talking about. This is time. I changed their gender, but I didn't change anything else about them, except for their hair a little bit. <laughs> uh, this used to be Lance. Now her name is Leia. Oh, I actually remember. Okay. That sketch is actually this flamingo right here. <laughs> um, I was kind of just doodling if I'm being honest, so. Here are two other videos I did way back when. Um, I was doing this challenge thing where I created a character based on a color and the emotions that are kind of tied to that color through the color theory. I'll have these videos in the description as well if you want to check them out. Um, this is another of those characters. Um, I never really got around to posting the video of the process for him, unfortunately. I think I remember him turning out to be my favorite design though, even like looking back on it. I think he's definitely my favorite, he's just... I like characters that are super peppy and cute and happy, and <laughs> that's what he is, so... He's my favorite out of the three, so it's really sad that I never got to post that video. <laughs> But if you look over here, avert your eyes over too. My favorite, like absolute favorite set of markers I've ever bought in, in my life. <laughs> I mean, I haven't bought in a lot of markers. Well, that's a lie, I've actually bought in a lot. <laughs> Basically, after I bought these, I used them constantly. And I use them to this day. And I will forever be in a woohoo stan. So, there's that. <laughs> From that set of markers, when I first got them, um, I had my sister pick five random colors, like two sets of five, and I had to do a five color character design challenge. And this is just me fleshing out their designs, trying to figure out where, where the colors work well. And in the end, I came up with two designs that I really like. I ended up changing her design up a lot though. Which is kind of unfortunate because I really like how she looks in this sketch. <laughs> I, I kept her design literally the same, just darker hair. <laughs> ah yes, okay. The dictionary challenge. I'm kind of sensing a theme here in a way though. It's like, I think that's three challenges in, yeah, that's three challenges in a row. <laughs> um, whoopsie. It must have been in like a phase or something. Okay, basically, the dictionary challenge is this little thing where you take a random page from the dictionary and you pick one word from that page and you draw things that are based on that word. The words I got were fantasy and grim. I believe I did this for an art class in high school. Let's see. I believe I was experimenting with multiply layers and like lighting digitally and while here's the image i'm not really too fond of how it turned out looking back on it i still remember being super happy with it when i initially did it so that's a plus i've learned a lot since i did this i started experimenting more and more with it so 
looking back on it, I actually did kind of a poor job, but for my first attempt, I think it's pretty good. Here's some more sketches of my OCs. This is Sage. She represents the seven deadly sin lust. Um, here is Levin, Lorraine, and Leia again. Um, the three main characters of my story. But then I was kind of looking at... I'm, I, was, I still wasn't set on this design, by the way. Um, I was really stuck on where, what I wanted Leia to look like because I wasn't sure completely. I do end up aging her down quite a bit. Um, yeah, I, I basically just make her like younger and less curvaceous. <laughs> and I also make her shorter. See, I actually wrote in here that I moved her down to this height instead of this one. Oh, I actually, I actually really like this spread. <laughs> so I saw this backpack a while, like a while ago. I'll put up a picture if I can find it. But it instantly made me think of Sue from BNHA. So I drew her wearing it and looking out cute. And then I just needed to fill the rest of the page. So I decided to have Tokuyami be the one giving it to her as a present. <laughs> I think it was just super cute. So. There's that. Here's another sketch. This one based on a prompt from my roommate. The prompt was dress. I would kind of like the composition of this one, but the character is, is she, I don't know, she just seems out of place in a way. Ah, yes, inked over. Oh God, <laughs> don't look. Um, let's start over here on this side. <laughs> Gosh, I can't- I still can't believe this is, um, last year, like one year ago. Um, oh, sorry, I shook my camera. Um, so I decided last year that I wanted to do Inktober weekly. I was gonna do it for four weeks or five weeks, I couldn't quite decide. Uh, so... These are just the thumbnails. <laughs> for all of the ideas, freeze, swing, misfits, ancient, and catch. I ended up cutting out swing and catch, which is sad because I really like this idea. Now, uh, this monstrosity. <laughs> I tried to do the first prompt and I absolutely hated it. I don't really know how this thumbnail turned into this drawing, but, but it did. And I begrudgingly decided not to rip this out of the sketchbook and just to kind of point out my many errors like all over the page. And then I decided I would just come back to it and try again later. I figured maybe that day I was just having an off drawing day. So I just left it there and walked away from the sketchbook. <laughs> These are just some outfits for my characters. Um, in my story, I was trying to come up with like a uniform for them to wear because they're a crew. But I think I ended up coming, like changing them up a little bit later in the future. And this is my Inktober for week one last year. Here, it's a nice close up image. <laughs> um, I really like how this one turned out. Um, the prompt was actually from my roommate, once again. But it was teddy bear with a heart. But since it was for Inktober, I kind of had to push the scary factor. And I think to this day, this is the, my favorite Inktober that I've ever done. I just, I really love it, if I'm being honest. Here are some more sketches on this side. Um, I was... I believe I did these in a French club meeting last year, so you can kind of understand the theme that's going on. This is, remember my character Frankie? She's actually French, so I decided to just draw her talking about her favorite parts of France. Then I also had this sticker of Alice in Wonderland, like the first page, written in French. And then of course, you can't draw French things without drawing the iconic Chat Noir, so. I think he turned out super cute, so I even outlined him and stuff. I believe all of these are for my profile slash reference pages for my comic. So 
these are basically just general images so I can know their body types. Once again, I do age her down so this, this is inaccurate. <laughs> And now we get into the last three weeks of Inktober, which I ended up putting off all month. <laughs> I don't know how, but the month escaped me. I got busy and I ended up just waiting until the 21st to do my second week of Inktober. So um, this is a much better rendition. I ended up redrawing my Week two, which was Freeze. Remember that terrible picture of Elsa? Yeah, remember that? It turned into this. <laughs> um, I think this one turned out a lot better. For week three, I just did Nathan and Simon from The Misfits because I couldn't think of what else to do for the prompt misfit. Just drew my favorite too. <laughs> These are just my color swatches for my Inktobers. Then for Ink Inktober week four, I ended up doing the prompt ancient and I decided just to do like a symbolic expression of how PD basically manipulated Pearl way back when before they kind of grew and had like a better relationship. But we can all agree, Pink Diamond was very manipulative of poor Pearl back then. This is just basic sketches. I drew a little skater boy. He's probably in like a group of kids that also skate or something. <laughs> and then over here, these are just my two characters again, Lorraine and Levin. Um, and I was trying to figure out the layout of my logo for the, you know, at the top of each webtoon chapter, there's usually the name of um, the comic. So I was trying to figure out, I knew I wanted to go with this kind of like font, but I wasn't sure what to put around it because I thought it looked like blank space. I ended up putting my art tag right here and I came up with a symbol combining all, they, these three characters have symbols on them. And I combined the infinity symbol from Leia, the inside of the sun symbol from Lorraine, and then the Upside Down Moon from Levin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, this is actually a commission for a clo my best friend that I never finished. She wanted me to draw some of the BBS crew, which are just, they're YouTube gamers. She just wanted me to draw them chilling out. And this is basically just me deciding what they look like in my style. But I guess I, I did end up drawing what I wanted to do for, with this later in the sketchbook, but I never colored it. And both of us just kind of forgot about it, so it never happened. This is probably the hardest prompt my friend gave me, my roommate gave me. So one of my friends, um, had this drawing prompt book and we all had to pick a random page and we combined the prompts on that on those three pages into one huge mess of a prompt and we decided what all three of us could do with it we were given until the end of the semester to come up with something and it was really really hard because the three words we got were armadillo labyrinth and jungle. I don't even kind of like know where my idea came from, but literally the day we got the prompt, I somehow came up with this idea to have twins <laughs> and they were and have them born with this curse mark. And when the village found out they had this curse mark, they were sent into this cursed jungle labyrinth or something. I don't even know, but it's actually kind of cool and how I tied in the armadillo prompt. I just had their code name be armadillo. So basically it's their names combined, Delora and Armand, armadillo, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a stretch, but it, it works. It's really weird, but I still kind of like it. <laughs> 
Okay, so unfortunately, this next page is classified. You don't get to see it. I, I don't like to cover up an entire page of my sketchbook, but it gives away too much information about my comic. So it would be big spoilers for like part of the story. So I can't show it to you. I can show you this though. <laughs> this is a draw this in your style challenge that I did on Instagram from an artist I follow named Blue Mary Chan. This is just a colorized pencil sketch I did um, a while back. I think I was just sitting there and I saw this bush with these really cute like white flowers on it. So I decided I just wanted to pull up my sketchbook and draw a girl with those flowers in her hair. What else would you do, you know? <laughs> and then this is the finished project product of let me pull it up okay this is the finished product of this prompt right here that, that five color character design challenge that my sister gave me a long time ago um basically i did thumbnails on these pages too and this is the thumbnail i ended up following I really like how it turned out. I think her hair and her skin clash a little bit, like just a little. But honestly, I'm willing to look past it because I really liked her. I even ended up naming her Everly, <laughs> so she's even got a super cute name. I'll zoom in a little. I wasn't really that experienced with markers or anything at this point, so I was super happy with how this turned out and how it wasn't plotchy or splotchy or anything. So yeah. This is where I designed the cover and the back of my sketchbook and it's also around the time when I was given the Arteza Everblend markers. <laughs> um, I was going to review these as well but life got super hectic and I never got around to doing so but if you look at the sticky note right here. Here are like my first thoughts about them. And I did learn something a little bit too late about these markers. <laughs> they bleed through pages. Um, specifically the colors with yellow pigment, which is kind of bizarre to me. I guess it's because they just have a stronger tone. But I closed my sketchbook and the pigment carried over to the other side of my page. And not only that, but it also went to this side. <laughs> I don't know, can you see that on camera? Oh, I'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah. You see those little like yellow squares right here? And then I have more yellow squares on this side. It's just, I was super ha uh, like, happy that I got these markers, but for some reason they just, they're so saturated that they leak after they're dry. <laughs> so I'm not really a huge fan of them, if I'm being honest. I don't use them that often at all. Um, these are just some thumbnails that I did with my um, To Fix Fractured Universe characters. That's the comic I'm working on, by the way. I don't know if I ever said the name in this video, but it's called To Fix a Fractured Universe. Um, it'll probably be post it at some point in the future. I'm working on a different comic first, so it'll probably be at least a year before this one's actually starting to be posted. And here's my doggy! Okay, <laughs> this is Bella. She's my baby. Um, I just, she was being all cute, cuddling with me, and I decided to pull up some of my favorite pictures of her and draw her. These two are drawn from reference pictures. These two were just me attempting to draw her. And then some doodles, as I said, for funsies. <laughs> if you look over here, this is the semi-finished illustration for, do, 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 where's the page? This girl. So as you can see, I made some big changes with her design. Um, before she looked like this with her, all of her cuteness, I ended up making her like a beefcake. <laughs> I gave her larger biceps, a thicker middle, 
and tattoos and like earrings and I just went all out. <laughs> I kind of just, you know, it happens. More threatening, more buff, more tattoos. Last minute, it was fun. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> These are just three alien character designs I came up with. These two are siblings, uh, Kayan and Aliena. And this is their mom, Rayla. And this page is also classified. It's the last page in my sketchbook I'm gonna do this to, I promise. But it has the biggest spoilers imaginable for a project I'm working on with my sister. And she told me I cannot show you them. So there's that classified. Here are just three of my OCs. This is Cleant, he's super cute. Then Sean and Tori. There's actually a story behind these weird jelly bean looking folks. <laughs> um, so for Christmas, one of my sweet mates got my roommate and I these squishmallows and they both had the code 007 on their tag. So we decided we're gonna name them Johns and Jamesy, both named after James Bond. Um, we came up with a little story for them too. Basically, they're in love, but they fight all the time. They butt heads pretty frequently, but in the end, they love each other enough to stick around. So I drew them cuddling and being all adorable. I don't know why Jamesy ended up looking like a peanut, but either way, <laughs> Here, I was just bored, I think. Like, I just drew my desk. I I don't know what else to say. I drew my markers that are literally always on my desk. Uh, my computer, which was playing music in front of me. Some of my school books. And as you can see, my desk was super, super messy last year. But this year it's a little less cluttered, which is super nice for making art. And I can actually make videos this year because I broke my stand last year. But this year I got a new stand for my camera. So I'm back to doing it. <laughs> this is that same little alien from before. Just, she is a very cute character. So I decided I just wanted to draw her being all cute and adorable. This is my character from my D&D &D campaign last year. She's a ranger elf named Rena. I wanted to design her character for so long, but I never got around to it until December. So here's her design. That's her pet cat. I don't remember its name, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> um, I also decided to dedicate this whole spread just to her and to D&D. So like, there's her mentor's necklace, her without her cloak and her armor. This, this one's probably my favorite, like these two up here. Cause like, I just think they look cool. This is her when she's stealthy and then fighting. So yeah, that's my D&D character. Um, I actually drew this page for my grandpa when he was sick. He really liked chickens and he lived on a farm so I just kind of drew these in hopes of making his day a little bit better. This side has a lot less um, sentiment. I'm pretty sure it's just brain barf. Like I wasn't really sure what I was doing. Designed a random character with glasses <laughs> and named him August. Uh, I drew this in a metallic gel pen I believe. Do you see the shiny? Can you see it? I don't even know. I can see it, like, I can see it in person, but I don't think you do. And then these, I, I believe I just drew these grapes with some Tombow brush pens. I don't even know, but I, they're kind of fun and abstract looking. That's just a thumbnail for a picture I did a long time ago. Um, this spread, I decided I wanted to draw some people sitting down because I was really struggle busting in that category and I wanted to improve. So I drew all of these from reference. Um, I drew Mina and Denki based off a picture on Pinterest. And then I drew Momo up here. She's not sitting, 
but she's not part of the study either. This right here is the study. <laughs> I just drew all of these sitting people, and then this one, the hand was up, and it reminded me of Su Yu. So I drew her again. I think that's really cute. I ended up using that for my alphabet challenge. Speaking of my alphabet, cha alphabet challenge, here are some thumbnails for that um, project. I'm still in the process of doing that. I have posted the first two videos for this and I will be continuing eventually in the future, like coming up here probably pretty soon. I posted A and B. I'll link those in the description as well. Basically this is just A through I and then randomly an R because I decided last minute I wanted Rapunzel to be R, not H. <laughs> um, so yeah, just some thumbnails. <laughs> I don't know, uh, this is just some random doodling involving Minecraft, because I was playing Minecraft, I guess. And I drew an Enderman, because that's my favorite mob. And I drew my character. <laughs> I don't know what happened, it looks really weird. But yeah, that's my character. Um, now, it, this is that commission I was talking about, remember? <laughs> for my friend that we both forgot about because like time got ahead of us and suddenly we both just forgot about it. But this is what I was going to do. I basically was going to have the boys um, all playing Mario Kart. I think Moo's just watching. And in the end I was going to draw this in like a small chibi form. It's Jiggly Panda winning. And I did the order so Jiggly got first and then basically Vanoss and Wildcat. Moo wasn't playing. That's, that's all. <laughs> oh, okay. This is back in January. Um, at this point in the sketchbook, there were huge fires, like, blazing across Australia. So, I wanted to, like, I don't know, do some small sketches and post on Instagram with a few links to some places you could donate to help out. Uh, I know it's not, I, it's not a lot, but I just wanted to do something because I felt so bad. I kept hearing all these terrible stories and I just felt so awful about it. So I just did a small post. It didn't get much attention, but hopefully it got one donation or something, you know. Um, here I believe I came to notice throughout my sketchbook I was looking through one day and I realized I suck at drawing feet. <laughs> so I decided to do a small study where I broke them down into their uh, basic shapes and then I started expanding by adding in toes and shoes and that's basically it just a small generic foot study on this side I wanted to draw Jesse and James from Pokemon um, then I drew some sunflowers for a friend of mine uh, she wanted me to paint on her bag and I wanted to test out how I was going to do that first. So I was testing out different ways I could draw them. Ooh, texture. Anyway, <laughs> I'm distracted. <laughs> um, yeah, I drew some sunflowers and Jesse and James. Boom. <laughs> oh, I really miss Carol and Tuesday. Okay, so it's basically this really good animation on Netflix about these two girls who are trying to make them na their like names known in the music industry on Mars. If you're wondering why they're on Mars, it's because this is set way in the future when Earth has kind of gone to ruin. <laughs> it's really, really good though. You should definitely check it out. The second season has like a lot of twists and turns that are just so unexpected for a show like this. So. Go ahead and watch it. It's not a long watch. Uh, it's two seasons long. It's really good, so I recommend 100%. If you go over to this side, uh, I drew this girl on a sticky note and I taped her in. And then I realized the sticky note and the washi tape were almost like the same color. If it wasn't transparent, it might have actually been. Who knows? Um, it made me super excited and for some reason it made me want to develop her character design based on this washi tape. Uh, I also did a video for that which I will link below. Um, 
don't know. I just think she turned out super cute. Super good. I think, I, oh yeah, I call it floating love. Oh, how creative. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, this is another sketch. I think it's from my alphabet challenge as well. It's Harley Quinn. For H. <laughs> and a little thumbnail. And this, once again, I was trying to redesign my time character, which, uh, Leia. I wanted to change her hair up at first. At first I was trying to make her look like a kid, which worked, and then I was like, oh, I don't like the hair, so I made it shorter. But then I also made her look older, and I was like, gosh dang it. So, basically, the final design looks like this, but she's aged down, so. Um, over here I was trying to decide on a more simplistic style because on my homework and my notes for school I was like doodling like this and I really I thought it was super cute and I was like you know what I'll come up with a secondary style for any time I just want to doodle a character you know so I basically just explored different proportions of body to head ratio and like I think I settled on this body type or this one. This one just looks like a little kid. So I think it was this one because it's supposed to be a mix between chibi and real. I kind of like how that one turned out the most. Like, oh, small, small details. <laughs> um, I just basically just wanted a simpler style to draw in. Um, on this side, it's basically just some more um, colorized pencil, pencil sketch. <laughs> it's basically some colorized pencil sketches and then I kind of just randomly decided I wanted to end this sketchbook with a huge mixed-media illustration so I drew a fairy with her songbird um, here's the sketch for that and I ended up doing the color swatch here but basically her hair and her skin are done with watercolor markers. The background elements are done entirely with a uh, watercolor wash. Her... And then I believe the rest of it. Her outfit and her little songbird here. They're both done with alcoholic markers. I believe a woohoo's because I didn't want to use the Artesas. <laughs> um, I actually... <laughs> I'm still looking back on it, super proud of this piece. I think it sums up my growth throughout this sketchbook really well. Because at the start, I didn't really use a lot of different types of markers or traditional media. But the second I got my first set, I just, I wanted to expand and learn and I wanted to experiment and I tried Inktober for once. I used to only do Inktobers in ballpoint pen. But this year, I obviously tried something different. <laughs> I also like this sketchbook. Um, I'll put a link of the sketchbook I use in, Am um, in Amazon. It's a Canson mixed media sketchbook. And because it's mixed media, I wanted to use it to its fullest potential, I guess. So that's kind of why I ended up buying these markers in the first place. Not only that, but uh, people I follow on YouTube were also using markers a lot more often. So I wanted to give it a shot myself. That's also one of the reasons I bought this sketchbook, if I'm being honest. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this. I, I think it, like if you look at the comparison, the first marker thing I ever did with the last thing I did in this sketchbook, obviously I have drawn recently and I've used since I did this, I've drawn with markers, but there really is a difference and it's really nice to see where you've grown in certain aspects of things and I think that's why going through your old sketchbooks is kind of important sometimes. <laughs> and I'm sorry guys, I'm rambling. Um, after this, it's basically just brain barf sketches, like and some stickers and then swatches. So, that is the end of the first sketchbook. 
I have ever personally finished. Um, I'm actually super proud of myself because I've had dozens of sketchbooks in the past, but I've never actually like finished one. So it was this was super satisfying in a way, like even though I finished this way back in February and I'm well into my next sketchbook, I'm still extremely happy to be able to say I finished an entire sketchbook. And I think if I remember correctly, um, this sketchbook has 60 pages in it. So I did front and back, which sums up to 120 pages worth of art, which is huge. So <laughs> I'm super proud. Before I wrap up this video, I wanted to give a huge thank you to you guys for sticking around for the whole book and watching my videos. Um, I genuinely hope you enjoyed and I also hope to see you in the next video. Bye!